In this video, we're going to look at working with text in InDesign. Here you see we already have InDesign open and a new document started. We have our workspace set up and we're going to need in your tools over here the character and paragraph tool palettes. Now if these don't show up in your tools, you will need to go up to Window and type in tables and click on character and paragraph to open them and add them to your tools. Okay, so the basics of it here in your basic tools is your type tool and you will click on it, come to your document, click and drag a box that's the size of where you want your text to be and then you will just type. Okay, so there we have some text. Now here at the top, it gives you your character and paragraph palettes. I like to use the ones here on the side. I just feel like it gives us, they're just easier for me to work with. Okay, so let's go through all of our different options. Here in this first area are all of your fonts. So, if you want to affect just a portion of your font, you can highlight a word and change the font. If you want to affect your entire text box, you can go back to your black arrow, which selects things. Make sure that your text box is selected. If it's not, you can click on it to select your text box. And then if you choose a font, it'll affect the entire text box. So that's how you change fonts. Underneath it, where it says regular, for this particular font, it only has a regular style. Let's choose a different font that has some different options. For example, let's go to, um, let's go to Arial. Arial has a lot of options. Okay, this is a regular font, but if you click the down arrow, it also has options for italic, bold, and bold italic. So if you click on these, you can see the font changes to the different styles of that font. All right, next down here where it has a small and a big T, if you just hover your cursor over that, it'll tell you what it is. This is the font size. Now it will give you here a selection of sizes that you can choose to make your font. If you need something larger or in between these, you can absolutely click in here and type what number you want it to be. And if you're not sure, you can also click in here and you can use the up and down arrows on your keyboard to make it go up and down until you get it just right. Okay, that's your font size. This next box beside it is the letting. This is the spacing between the lines. Now if it's set to auto, it'll just default to a spacing that is appropriate for this particular font size. But you can also, if you wanted your lines to be closer together, you know, choose a smaller number or a bigger number. And this is handy because there are times when the automatic spacing between lines is, is too wide or too close together and you want to give it your own amount of spacing. All right, this next box is how visually the letters look up against each other and there's a couple of options, metrics and optical. I generally leave this set to metrics and just leave it alone, but if a particular font looks funny between a couple of letters, you can adjust that to maybe to get it to look better. Okay, this here is the um, spacing between the letters and this actually I do use quite a bit. This allows you to um, spread things out or space them closer together. Zero is the, the normal amount. Now this is handy if, for example, you have two lines of text and let's say you want that top line to be big and you want this one to be smaller. 
but you kind of want to just make that spread out and emphasize it a bit. You can click on the tracking here between the letters and increase it a bit. There are times when this makes sense to do and then times when it doesn't, but that's what that does. All right, we're gonna set this back to zero so that it's at normal. Okay, this here is your font height. So if you want this font to be taller than it is, stretched out, you can, if you're trying to fill a space. This is really handy. Right beside it is your font width. You can make it wider than it actually is. Now while the tracking up here affects the spacing between the letters, the text width here actually stretches the letters themselves. You can see that the spacing doesn't really change. It's just making the letters wider. All right, this next spot here, this is um, baseline shift. This allows you to make something superscript or um, subscript. So this can be used, for example, if you're doing a price. Something is $9 and you want the zeros to be small and at the top. So you can come here and make them say half of that, about 24 points, smaller size. And then here, you can scoot them up. Once again, any of these, you can click in them and use your cursors to go up and down to get them where you want them to be. And see, now you've made um, the letter smaller and up here. Now this is a spot where you could select the period and you can take your tracking here and scoot it down and see how it's going to shift the spacing and bring those zeros in to make them look a little more, put them a little closer. Okay, the last thing is the skew. So this is handy. Remember we had that font earlier that did not, it only had a regular option. Um, let's see, I think this is one. Yep, this only has a regular option. It does not have an italics option. But we really like this font, but we kind of want it to be italics. We can simulate italics with SKU. So click in here, and I'm using my up arrow to just give it a little bit of tilt. So if you go up to about 10%, that's a pretty good italics right there. And that is extremely handy when you have a font that only has the regular option and you need it to be italics. All right, the other things we need to look at are in the paragraph palette right here. Okay, so this, let's start with, aligns your text. Now let me paste in a bigger chunk of text so that we can really see how this is going to look. So I'm going to copy a paragraph from a Word document that I have and I'm just using my Command or Control C to copy. And I'm going back to my document. I'm going to go to my type tool, create a new text box, and I'm doing Control or Command V to paste that in. If you don't want to use the keyboard shortcuts, you can go up to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste, and that will paste your text in. So. I want to show you the difference in these. So I'm going to go to my black selection tool, have the entire text box selected. Okay, now it is set to left align, and it was naturally defaulted to that. This is center align, so it centered all of the text, centered the bottom line, that's where it's really obvious. Here's all aligned to the right. Now these are your justified, so this is left justified. It pushes everything to both edges, um, and then the last line to the left. This is center justified, both edges centered at the bottom. Right justified and full justified, which I don't often do because if that didn't all fit on one line, it could come down to the bottom and really spread it out. Um, this allows you to indent your text from that side. And this is handy if there is a portion of the text that you want to really emphasize. I'm going to click in here and bring 
another paragraph out to demonstrate this. So let's say that we just want this one section to be indented so we can indent it from the left and right here we can also indent it from the right. See, so if there was a particular reason you wanted to emphasize a particular paragraph, you can do it with those indentions. All right, this tool indents only the first line. So when you've highlighted this text, however much you choose to up that quarter of an inch, it'll indent that first line. In the same way, this one will only indent the last line from the other side. Um, another one I do use sometimes is the drop cap. So this will make the first letter drop cap by however many lines you tell it. So it makes that first letter big, and you see this sometimes when you have um, articles in magazines or newspapers. Um, another thing that we use a lot, here this is automatically set to hyphenate. And what that does is at the ends of the sentences, if a word is hanging off, let's say if we just do this plain left aligned, let's take off the drop cap so that you can see. Well, none of it's going to do. Well, if you take off the hyphenate, it makes it so that none of the words hyphenate at the ends. And I prefer that because I don't like hyphenated half words at the ends of my paragraphs. So those are the basics of what you need to know for your basic character and paragraph palettes. Um, there is one other thing I want to show you. If you are doing, if you have a very long paragraph or body of text, or if you have a long list, and it does not all fit in your text box. The InDesign will put a little red plus sign at the bottom of the text box saying that there is more. So what you can do is you can click the little red plus sign and basically it picks up the rest of the text that did not fit in there and you can draw a text box on that same page or on the next page and it will flow the text from here onto there. And those two will stay linked up in that document. So if you should stretch this down, you see how it pulled it from here? It'll do that so that you can get these synced up. This is really handy if you have a list of names and you want to put them in two or three columns. You can start the first one for as much as you have. Um, let it go on to the second one and it'll give you also a little red plus sign, click on it and make a third text box and it, let it run on down also. Um, and that's what I wanted to show you for your text boxes. Thanks for watching.